Hello everyone, welcome to Game Junk Prototype episode 96, recording on Sunday, February 27th, 2022. My name is Frank. My name is Sean. And my name is Andrew. And it's the week all gamers on planet Earth have been waiting for. The release of Elden Ring, which has been getting the highest review scores possibly ever. So Sean and I have played Elden Ring. We will be talking about it and our impressions. And, uh, you know, it got a lot of 10s. IGN gave it a 10. And we're going to talk about, like, what makes a game a 10? Is it feasible? What are you willing to forgive in a game in order for it to give a 10? Uh, it does feel like kind of a different thing between movies and games, but we'll get to that in a second. Uh, let's get to Elden Ring, the latest release from From Software. Uh, Sean, you bought it and played it. I'm surprised. First uh, From Software game for me. First? You've never even dabbled or tried one? Nope. I mean, probably the closest I've come to a Souls-like game would maybe be Fallen Order, I guess. Uh, hmm. I don't know. Okay, yeah. It's like certainly not as hard. What about Neo? Did you try Neo? Nope. Well, that was the one that kind of got me into it. Uh, Huck, you did not buy Elden Ring. Is it on request from the library? Indeed it is. Indeed Which version? It is. I think I have the PS5 and Series X on reserve. I guess reserve. that's... With PS5s being so hard to get... Is it easier, do you think, and the, the wait list shorter for PS5 games? Because not as many people have one? Surprisingly not, actually. Mm -hmm. Series X is shorter. It's almost like the PS5 is extremely popular and a superior <laughs> system, even though no one wants to say it for some reason. I don't get it. Uh, I'm, I'm playing on PS5. I'm going to snap when I see a patch in two weeks saying the PS4 version now supports auto-popping and save transfers, and I will lose my mind uh, because apparently it runs at 60 frames per second playing the PS4 version on PS5. So well, can, can we stop for a second there? Whoa, yeah. What dude, what's the deal? Well, you know, you, you touched on that last week. I know that there was some discussion uh, on the discord about this as well, but I don't know if you've fully broken down that idea of like both horizon and, you know, I guess if Elden ring offered it, you would play it on the last gen console <laughs> so that you can get trophies for both consoles. Even you've though it's you've broken it down, Sean, congratulations. <laughs> that exact that is exactly what I would do and do. Uh, I want the auto pop for both trophies. First of all, if we're going to blame anyone, don't blame me. Blame the companies. They should. It should be a trivial task to if you can export from one to the other, it should be trivial to go the opposite way. And then they are the ones enforcing this forwards compatibility for auto pop. The save game file is their own format. This this should not matter at all. And uh, they should be letting me play on PS5. If people can auto-pop, they should let it go both ways. So first of all, if companies did that and weren't complete dummies about it, I would play the PS5 and go backwards. But I am a pathetic loser who loves trophies in an irrational manner. And I'm trying not to be like that. I guess this is one step forward in the sense that even though it hasn't been confirmed, there is a looming, uh, you know, possibility that this auto pop could happen later. But I'm playing the PS5 version, and I may regret it. Or maybe it'll be this the first step to not caring. But with Horizon, I played it on PS4. I played it for a bit, and it was feeling pretty jank, like we talked about last week. And then I said, okay, I'm going to try the PS5 version. If it's like a huge improvement in terms of playability, performance, graphics, I'll just play that. So I fired that up, kind of got to where I was. And I'm like, honestly, I can't even tell a difference. It's playing almost exactly the same. That's why I switched. If there was a huge difference, I would have played the PS5. It's not that big of a difference. But, you, like, but it's a big difference in terms of like the visuals, right? Not really, no. I did not notice a big difference. I think I looked... The only difference is the water looks a lot better and possibly something with foliage. And the there is some upscaling, um, like texture 
stuff at the output level, I, I honestly can't perceive it. So I'm fine. If it, if it was that big of a difference, I would switch. The mm -hmm. only thing is maybe dual sense functionality, but I don't even care that much about that, to be honest. And when I read the thing is when you hold your bow back, there's resistance. I hate resistance on triggers. I don't want my finger to hurt from playing your game. I do not care. It might sound cool. It is not fun. In Call of Duty, I turn it off immediately. The only game, well, maybe not the only, the best use of DualSense is Returnal. Like, you only have to halfway press it in order to, to aim down the sights, and a full press does something different. And it offers resistance to know when you're at half press. Now, that is revolutionary. And that is why it should have been my third best game of the year. And that is why Horizon 5 should... or. Forza Horizon 5 should not have been on my top 10 list. And that is why it shouldn't have gotten a 10 on IG. We'll keep going oh, with that geez. topic later. <laughs> Thank you for firing me up, Sean. <laughs> You're welcome. <sighs> before, we, before we leave this topic, uh, Frank, do you feel dirty for your technique of getting two plats for the price of one? Because I think you should. I think you should be ashamed. You call me dirty Frank, and I feel <laughs> real dirty about it. I am deaf. I have, it is nothing but shame. I, I, I fully admit it. I just can't leave it on the table. I cannot leave that plat on the table. So, I mean, it might look very bad in a few years' time. Oh, I, I think on your deathbed, you're going to be like, I can't believe I got all those free plats. I didn't earn them. I, I mean, it's the same them. way I feel about cheesing the demon of hatred in Sekiro. Yet, everyone I talk to cheese the demon of hatred. So, we're all together. Uh, so, no, there is some shame, 100%, but not enough to dissuade me from doing it. That's for sure. Okay. Can we talk about Elden Ring, the biggest game of the year? What is yeah, we can do assuredly that. going to win game of the year? It's, it's, I mean, hey, Breath of the Wild 2 could still come out this year, Frank. I firmly believe Breath of the Wild 2 will come out this year. As will God of War Ragnarok, and neither will get Game of the Year. This will get Game of the Year. I'm pretty it's confident. definitely feeling like it right now. <laughs> uh, and let's get into it. Why do I feel that way? Even though I am not, you know, in love with the game the way I am with, like, certain mechanics. And I, what class did you pick, Sean? Well, that's an interesting question, Frank, because I started out with the Prophet, and I was like you know, played maybe an hour with the Prophet, and I was like, what? The combat is absolutely horrible in this game. What is going on? And he has a spear, and the spear is just not like, it's like when you're fighting people, you're just like constantly like rotating at each other, and like everybody's missing, and it's like, what the hell? So I picked the Astrologer, because okay. that's what Power Picks told me to do. <laughs> <laughs> and they said it's the most reasonable. And I have to admit, like, I'm just casting spells a lot. I don't love the melee combat in this game, or Dark Souls for that matter. I find it clunky. I get that it's, like, kind of a calculated thing. If I was just doing melee combat in this game, I probably wouldn't like it all that much. But I can do a little variety of spell casting and melee. It, it is a little repetitive. It's certainly not the best combat I've ever played. Uh, and anyone who says it is... Like, look at another From Software game. It does perfect combat. So, uh, it, at least for me. So, the combat's not great, but ultimately the difference is Sekiro is an action game. Eld Elden Ring, I, I keep calling it Elden Ring. Elden Ring is an RPG. So, it is all about customizing playstyle, uh, investment, growth, like, and that's, what, and that's what it skews towards. Now, okay, let's call it grinding, Sean. Sean, let's call it grinding. I'm happy I to won't. do that. And I certainly could take, uh, if I wanted to, could take an antagonistic role with Elden Ring and say that this game is overrated. Uh, I, I feel like there are many things design-wise you could lean into from, from software games in general. And I did feel that way to start, and I've grown to love them uh, because of Sekiro. But... The reason why grinding in this particular game is good is because the world is so much fun to explore. It doesn't feel like the same thing over and over again. 
every area feels remarkably unique. Like the same way with Deathloop and uh, even Returnal to some degree, uh, maybe not Returnal, but like learning about locations, learning about the world is valuable information. And I did experience this with Sekiro. Like I could play through that whole game tomorrow and I would remember the patterns of the enemies, where they are, like learning about where threats are. And I, it's a, it's the same thing on a huge scale, and the enemies are a little more spread out in Elden Ring. But I love going to new places. If something's too hard, I fast travel, get the hell out of there, and go to another area and unlock more fast travel locations and areas and caves and sub-bosses and bosses. And I'm always finding new stuff while leveling up. So the combat is not the draw, the world and the exploration is. And, you know, in our disc Discord, there was a bit of a, like, controversy about uh, started by uh, Blake about the vistas and saying they don't look good and uh, a lot of divisive comments about the look of this game. And I kind of got it. From what I saw, it kind of looked a little bland. In the game, in HDR and in LG OLED, this game pops it is beautiful uh, yeah i got i got a few screenshots for blake i'll send them to discord <laughs> like, there so are beautiful vistas i'm not saying yeah. every screenshot represents that but oh boy have you made it to the underground city yet like the the probably not like okay for the record i am 21 hours in level 40 i think yeah and i'm like four to five hours in level 16 so even dax bought this game i, I was talking to him yesterday he's like uh yeah, I bought that Elden. I, really? Like, I, I figured you would never buy that. He's like, no. I, I want to spend some money. I bought it. <laughs> <I'm kidding. laughs> uh, literally every week. And he, I, he's saying it's way too freaking hard. Like, I, but he's still playing it. So uh, I don't think that'll deter him. Like, I think he beat Fallen Order on the highest difficulty many times. So I don't think he's shy of difficulty level, but it is a bit of a barrier to entry. So, Sean. I'm all about the exploration. I love the world. Mm -hmm. Not so crazy about combat, but don't hate it either. What is your experience with your time with Elden Ring? Well, I'm very similar. I mean, I've you know, a lot of the reviews were making the comparisons to Breath of the Wild, and I definitely have that same feeling of being in the world of Breath of the Wild, not feeling pressured to do anything, just kind of like, oh, that looks cool. I'll go over that way and see what I find. And um, and so that's kind of been driving what I've been doing so far. It is difficult, obviously. Uh, and I mean, that's one of the things I was most curious about is like, you know, is, am I just going to be immediately like, fuck this game, turn it off, and why did I spend 80 bucks on it? And, you know, there's some things that I'm like, I don't get. Like, you know, the first two enemies, basically, in the game are these giant bosses that are impossible to beat that just one hit kill you and you're like okay <laughs> and i guess if you know from software games you, sp you should expect that you should know that but you just kind of turn around go the other direction and start doing something else and and that works i mean the thing that i'm kind of most frustrated about now and kind of wondering you know am i going to can i add one thing to your in the introduction part sure is the tutorial area i look down there's a pit right? That's where the tutorial area is. There's like some cryptic message about like, it doesn't say this is the tutorial area. It's some message. And I'm like, something awaits you and all this stuff. Meanwhile, I've played from software games before they tease you or someone writes a message to go in a pit and you jump in and you die. And I'm like, what the fuck? So I'm like, I don't want to jump down there. I don't even know if I can land that height. Like, <laughs> yeah. like just tell me it's safe to go down there in like non cryptic ways or make me go down there. Like, and just in general, the way this game teaches mechanics or uh, or lack of teaching the mechanics is really frustrating. And I personally don't understand how this, from software games, they get the ultimate free pass. If other games didn't tell you how to use their systems and required you to go to the internet to look at guides, and that's the only way you can figure this stuff out, I feel like every reviewer would criticize them for them it's the best thing about it yeah this game guess what that's their game get used to it loser you're gonna have to go to the internet and check wikis every 10 minutes if you want to know how to play this game like why do people give them 
like have an option like the whole one more thing sorry Sean. uh the big thing was this is an open world game but we're gonna lead you down the right path a bit more than we have in the past and it's like all it is is a yellow line in a general direction on a site of grace that's your way of leading the player wow thank you way to make this game more accessible and to the point where i follow the yellow line and i miss getting important power-ups flasks uh being able to summon things like everyone who's playing this game read an article that says on ign or somewhere else 11 things to do first in elden ring because you pretty much have to do them if, if you need to know how to do these things you're not even experiencing the game properly until you get the basic elements and even then if you got it in the game you wouldn't know what to do with it there's a reason why bandai namco has an official video that's 20 minutes long telling players what to expect in the game if if there was like a 20 minute video manual for every other game before you played it i feel like more people would have a problem with it uh so it's it's very strange like and i get yeah. it don't get me wrong i get it i love these games but you could at least criticize their ability to teach players how to play yeah i mean it's it, like it, it is refreshing that you know, there's not like an hour long tutorial that holds your hand through everything. Like they kind of, for the most part, just let you go. Um, but yeah, I mean, there's stuff that you don't know right away. And there's things like, you know, crafting. Oh, you got to get the crafting kit from this merchant here. Like there's all these things that just from reading, you know, stuff online, I was like, oh, okay. <laughs> like it's simple yeah, you stuff know. that you should you have. Wouldn't it. Know. Yeah. So I don't get that either. Um, you know, I think there is some fun to discovering things in the game, but like fundamental stuff, I feel like should be told to you close to the beginning of the game. And I guess one benefit of this game from a from software perspective is the grinding aspect because it was a little tougher to grind in Sekiro. You could hit a boss, and no matter how how high your level is, like the max was like feasibly if i remember right like 10 or 11 you know if you don't know how to parry and beat that boss you are going to get slaughtered you could have leveled up the whole game and the last boss with three stages will destroy you unless you get perfect at combat this game you can level up to beat the game like you could just keep grinding to a point where you make it easier for yourself so it might not be the most fun but at least you have that option and i kind of do take that option at one point i got teleported have you hit an ensnare chest yet sean no but i read about it and i was like oh god that i got teleported to some mine and it's these crazy arachnid alien priests that are shooting a hundred projectiles that home in on me and one shot kill me and i'm like what the fuck is going on here now and you can't get out you can't like fast travel you out can of there. like you can kind of run out but i'm like i don't want to lose all my my uh my runes either so i mean that's me being greedy and they would probably say just just run get out but then i eventually i was able to get out and i actually used it to level up pretty cheaply because they gave a lot of runes but it wasn't fun like i'm like i'm i can't not open a chest i understand the design incentive would be like you know uh, being prepared for danger and risk reward at every turn but when there's a chest i'm opening it you're not going to convince me otherwise yeah. like it, it, well, it is not an uh, a good risk reward mechanic because i've fought my way to to the top or bottom of some dungeon and like the enemies respawn what am i going to do wait to open this chest until i'm a higher level like fucking no way i'm opening this thing so i guess it's just fuck you for opening it well, fuck you very much. I will continue to open them. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I had read, and I, maybe the one you did was different, but I had read some of those. You cannot, like, you can't fast travel out of there. You literally have to beat the enemies because there's a new sa checkpoint or save point in that sort of dungeon you get teleported to, and you just keep restarting there every time you die. Hmm. And I don't know, maybe part of it is because I think you can't fast travel if enemies are really close to you, so maybe that's part of it. Yeah, and if you're uh, underground, you can't fast travel either. But once you get to a site of grace, just hot tip, if you rest, you can open up your, mass, your map and fast travel. Like, I was like, I, 
I was way down a cave. I'm like, I can't beat this boss. I have to walk all the way back. But in all your sights of grace, will have a red line through them, but you can get around it. So, uh, but just in general, like the trees, what are they called again? The, uh, Elden trees. Is it Elden trees? Yeah. So. And, yeah. They look amazing. Like it's an, an awesome fantasy world as always with their games, enemies, bosses, all that stuff is fantastic. Like ev- I, I, I gotta say like the opening crawl or whatever you want to call it with like the artwork of the different enemies and the narration. I was like, Oh my God, I'm going to love this game. <laughs> and then I just died. Sean, <laughs> like, don't, don't sleep. The music, the music is fantastic. The opening or the main menu music is epic. And the, the atmospheric music, like this is going to win the game award for best music, 100%. Write it down, lock it in, not even a question. Uh, and it is like really impressive. For, I know people love From Software Games because of their world building and their embedded lore. I'm not as crazy about that. I, I actually like that I'm not seeing cinematics and dialogue all the time. Like that is refreshing. Uh, but I wish it was just a tiny bit more explicit and not depending on wikis as much. And I would love uh, bestiary or like uh, the names of the creatures as I fight them. But even like weird touches, like when you have you beat the land octopuses yet? I only know uh, they're I mean, called. I've, la- I've seen them, but I ran away from them. So the only reason why I know they're called land octopuses is because when you <laughs> when you defeat one, one of the items you pick up is a land octopus ovary. <laughs> Like, like it's like just weird little things like that. Like not doing what every other game does and pushing weird things uh, or stuff you collect. Like, I love that. So um, the coasts, like the coastlines and the beaches feel like real beaches. That does not happen often in games. Like it, like it reminds me of the end of Planet of the Apes a lot. Like just these kind of like, authentic coastlines. And uh uh, that is super impressive. There's an island, and I'm like, I have no idea how to get to the island. And then by exploring, I met, I, fa- I, I couldn't believe it. I exited a cat cave, and I'm like, where is this going to lead me to? Like, I have no idea where I am right now. And it was that island I saw before. And I'm like, oh my god, this is amazing. I love this game, and I just want to keep playing. I cannot stop playing. I invited people to my house almost as a reason to have to quit playing that game. And as soon as Dax walked in, he was the first person to arrive. He said, oh, I'm playing Elden Ring. Oh, oh sh- let me show you something. And I like, I fired up the game again and showed him a bunch of stuff. So even when people came over, I still played Elden Ring. I cannot stop playing this game. And like I said, I'm not in love with it. I just, it has the best huck the carrot on a stick. There's always a carrot on a stick. And in this game, it's more like a piece of pizza on a stick because I want to <laughs> eat it. I want that piece of pizza on a stick. And I don't care if it's a big slice or a little slice. I'm going to keep going until I eat all that pizza up. And uh, it's I'm only in the starting area. I'm still in Limgrave. I have not ventured outside of it. I've beaten two bosses that are trophies. Uh I've beaten a lot of the sub bosses, but uh, yeah, I I'm like, should I go back and just hammer out Horizon so that I can put it away and then focus on this game for however long I need to? And I'm like, that's what I was going to do, and no, I, I cannot stop playing this game. <laughs> yeah, that's kind of where I'm at too. Where I'm like, I keep waiting for the game to really something to happen to just push me away, and I'll be like, okay, I'll go back and play Horizon. But yeah, I keep kind of getting pulled into it. And, you know, just to, um, so at the start, I said I, I, I played as a prophet originally. I switched to samurai, which I'm liking Ooh. quite a bit more. Yeah, that, I, I'm curious about that class. Yeah, because it comes with a katana and a bow, so I can kind of do some ranged stuff, which is not the best, but, like, I like having that option. Um, and, you know, the horseback combat, I really like. It, it feels, yeah, I, I think I like it's really it, cool. But I like I mean, my big... I, I like that it's there. It's one of the best versions of uh, horse combat that exists, but I do find it can be a little awkward. And, you know, aiming spells, you have to be facing forward, and it can be 
a little cumbersome at times, but it's better than other games. And What's the what we're talking about mounts and horse combat, you mentioned Breath of the Wild. This game finally understands when you call your mount, it should appear right under you. I don't have to press a button to get on it. I don't have to wait for it to walk up. Uh, I, you know, I'm playing Horizon. I'm like, this mount isn't even fast. Like, why? And Breath of the Wild, don't even get me started. You climb a, you climb a, a rock face and your horse has disappeared. It's like, I got to go all the way to a stable to get a horse again? Fuck this game. Uh, this game is like, hey, Hit the button, voila, horse right up under your crotch. Beautiful. Love you, Elden Ring. Thank you, <laughs> Elden Ring. Yeah, that is good. I do miss having a hang glider. That would be a nice thing. I don't know if you do get something like that in this game or like a spell or something. Um, but uh, I just, yeah, on the combat, like, um, and just the difficulty overall, like my kind of thing is that I'm, I'm struggling with a bit is, you know, Exploring is fun, but inevitably, any direction you go, eventually you're going to hit some giant boss that's going to jump, come out of the water or fall out of the sky, and you're like, okay, turn around, <laughs> go the other direction. And so then now you're managing in your head, like, okay, that thing's over there, that thing's over there, and you're like, are you trying to stay away from all this stuff? And I mean, I don't, I don't know when, I, at some point, I assume I will level up to be like, maybe I can actually make an attempt at these things, but I'm like nowhere close to it right now. The and that's summoning is key. Have you got the summoning bell yet? Yes. And I did do one boss fight with uh, help from yeah. something. Which was so cool. you, if you're not playing multiplayer, you can summon spirits that, you know, distract the boss and like take away some of their aggro towards you, which is very necessary. Uh, but, you know, it, it's kind of a cheese thing, but I don't hate it. Like I, I probably would have given up on this game without it. And I would just have to grind endlessly. Yeah. And so, yeah, there's stuff like that, that kind of, you know, people have been saying it's more accessible, more approachable, you know, like I, it definitely has those things without really getting rid of, I, I think what the difficulty is that people seem to enjoy about these games, which I don't totally get, but, you know, I understand there's a, a lot of people say, hey, you, when you try a really difficult boss and you try over and over again and then you finally beat him, you know, there's that amazing feeling of like you conquered that boss. And I get it, but I mean, that doesn't feel like amazing game design to me. That just feels like, okay, just ratchet up some numbers until it's yeah. like an epic battle, I guess. But um, I mean, there really is an interesting and intricate leveling system in terms of. Like balancing that, I'm sure they have many games to have tweaked that and improved it. But where this game actually, the fact that it's open world, the biggest design improvement in this game for me is the idea of the flask refresh. If you beat a group of enemies, your fl flasks that refill health and or HP and FP, I guess FP's mana, or it like refills those based on the size of the group of enemies and you know like arbitrarily almost like it's it's locked in design wise with those enemy spawns so you don't have to keep resting at sites to refill your flask so you can clear out an entire area uh once you learn which ones have certain flask refreshes and like that is a huge improvement for me so i don't rest after every battle and everything respawns so that is a great idea i love it um i don't know if i have a lot else to say like as initial impressions other than it's big it's fun and i'm addicted yeah the only other thing i will add that you know comparing to breath of the wild and the thing that i really liked about breath of the wild that they don't seem to have an equivalent to in this game is there's not really any environmental puzzles you know the shrines i loved in breath of the wild there's nothing really like that in this game like it feels like it is mostly just combat and it's like grind 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 till you can fight a boss fight a boss and you know there is exploration to try and find loot uh which is you know i do enjoy that but i just don't know if there's more to the world that i haven't seen yet because i'm still pretty early um, and like you were saying, I, I don't know story-wise 
you know, I've come across maybe three people in the world that I've had brief dialogue exchanges with so far. So I don't know how much of that exists. You know, a lot of people have mentioned there's no quest log in the game. So far, I haven't really felt like I needed it, but I don't know how you are 20 hours in, Frank. I've actually found that I'm I'm remembering where I need to go, what I need to do. Uh, I know the big kind of choke points or whatever where I'm like, okay, I, that was a huge blockade or something I couldn't do. I can explore a bit, find some other stuff, and then go back to there. So I actually find navigating the world really easy and i like the map and there's enough variety in terrain and location that i rarely get lost you know appropriately where i get lost is in the forest when it's all trees and like in real life how you get lost in a forest i get lost in the forest in this game so i love the beacons how you can place beacons and markers uh they're very visible and I don't have to go to the top of a tower and mark things, and I can only mark four, like in Breath of the Wild. Ugh. Uh, and I certainly don't mind not having to get new weapons all the time. Like that is. Not yeah, I was going to ask about that. Did were previous from software games? Didn't they have weapons that break over time? I don't know. I don't know to be honest. Sekiro didn't, but that's a totally different hmm. type of game. Okay. There yeah, might I have been I, de degradation systems or durability. Uh, I don't know. I, th I feel like that's more of a Bethesda thing, but I can't be certain. Yeah, I kind of came into the game preparing myself for that, but I was pleasantly surprised that it's not there. I've just been like uh, reinforcing armaments with the, the smithing stone and stuff like that, and it's gone pretty well. And I'm, I will be playing it probably till... 7 30 in the morning eight in the morning <laughs> would be my guess if the last few nights repeat themselves tonight uh so looking like it's going to be a very good game for me and uh kind of makes you want to go back go back and play demon souls very soon and bloodborne but uh we'll see where it goes i get it i get this game i get the hype for this game i don't think it's a 10 but it's a great game and I guess there have been some performance issues, which kind of talked about that with Horizon as well. But um, the only thing I've had is like terrain texture pop in. Like, yeah, I've definitely seen that. Maybe a little more than I expected in some places, and like LOD stuff. But um, yeah, it hasn't been bad. And I, you know, I'm playing on PS5 as well, so. I don't know. I've heard PC. There's like stuttering issues, and Xbox had some problems can't remember exactly what but seems like ps5 is the way to go right now but yeah i think so even even in terms of performance things i saw ps5 is better than uh series x am i even getting the names right i can't remember. uh and i think the best perf like frame rate is ps4 on a ps5 sorry Hawk, go ahead uh, I was just going to ask about the, so you said like, you keep referring to the grinding, the grinding. Is that literally just like every combat encounter you get experience, which then you can use to level up? Or is there quests yeah. that where you have well, to like complete things or like, what is this grinding? There is no, uh, like it's, it's a universal economy in, in Souls games where it's like typically Souls right where you kill things you get souls you can sell items for souls the equivalent of souls in this game are runes and there's no quests for runes it's either for killing enemies or selling items or things in your inventory and you're just kind of changing your your rune count and then you use those runes to level up or to buy things so i really like the universal economy of these games uh but you know i do I don't know if I'm, I think I miss like just quests where the doing the quest is a, a rune reward or something like that. That, that is something that I, I generally miss, but uh, you know, it's always that calculated. The grind is more, do I want to go kill enemies? I know I can kill to get runes to level up, to go tackle a harder enemy, like typical RPG grinding, but more combat based yeah it does it is starting to feel a little repetitive in that sense like i feel like i'm just kind of going over areas i've been before to kill enemies i've killed a bunch of times before 
because I want to get to this level to have this attribute a certain level so I can use this weapon that I got or whatever or buy things. But I wish in the stores there was a way to compare an item to the one I currently have equipped. That feels like a big lacking thing. And my last thing, just a general criticism of this game and possibly Dark Souls, not so much Sekiro. It wasn't a big deal for me because you only have one weapon. Like I'm always hitting D pads to like decide what I'm doing. Like, oh, I need to hit D to switch between these things. D up, D down. Like that's that management aspect is really not fun to me. Yet another reason why I love Sekiro. There's way less of that in that game, but constantly selecting things and make you know screwing up and having the wrong thing equipped is not fun to me. I, I feel like there should be ways of getting around that. It took me a while to get some of the controls down. And like, I still have not figured out how, like the uh, D pad down is supposed to be to use your health, uh, yeah. I think, right? It cycles between anything you have equipped on your D pad down, down cycles between them. Square uses whatever is currently selected. Square, right. Okay. I remember doing and if you that a hold, few times. This is good to know. Not if you hold down, on the d-pad it'll go to your first thing in your inventory so if it's your health flask it'll go to that automatically so you don't have to scroll through a bunch of stuff okay yeah i it's rarely use health in the middle of a battle anyway because it takes a couple seconds and then you get hit usually i mean this was a psychonauts problem too in halo like selecting things i, I to some degree nobody saves the world too i don't understand why the game doesn't pause especially if nobody saves the world when you want to change forms i, I don't understand why the game doesn't pause I, I from a design perspective it baffles me and we uh, i'm sure i'll ask graham about that when he's on the show but i can just go to the i can pause and go to the form menu and pause anyway like it's there's an exploit to do that regardless it, it makes no makes no sense to me and in these games i assume all of these strange design decisions of not giving way to pause and select what you want to do is because of multiplayer, which feels like an afterthought in these games anyway. So uh, I, I would much rather have an offline version where I can pause and select the thing I want to use so I'm not like getting killed in combat. Yeah, I have been playing off the offline mode um, the last little while, and it still doesn't actually pause the game when you go into the pause menu, which is annoying. But we didn't really talk uh, talk about the, the but message if, if, system. I know I know what detractors are going to say. Well, it's like real life. You have to pick what you're going to do. Well, in real life, I would know one flask is here and one flask is here, and I would grab the right one from my body. I wouldn't have to like like cycle through things on my body to pick the right thing. So <laughs> yeah. So yeah, we didn't really talk about the message system. I don't. Was this in any other Souls games before? Oh yeah, this is in. This is from the first it's a big one. thing. Yeah, it's okay. one of the yeah, it's one of the pillars. Yeah, it's interesting. Like I didn't really know what that was originally. So there was just all these like markings all over the place, and I'm going up and I'm reading the messages, and they don't really make sense. And I'm like, what the hell is this? And then I realized, oh, this is from other players. And you know, for a while I was like, I don't really like this. Like this is just littering the whole landscape. It's kind of ruining the vibe of the world. Like. I don't like it, but then I was at one boss fight and it actually there was some advice that actually helped me. So what was you it? Know, just use parry, <laughs> which I was not really using much up until that point. So for the record, I am against the messaging system. I yeah. think it, I, it clutters the world. It it's annoying and I just ignore them for the most part especially in a game where you just have to check wikis anyway to find out half of the stuff you need to do. Like it seems like a weird secondary information system that isn't reliable and it's not helping me. It's bothering me. There should be an option to turn those off. Maybe there is. And I just don't know about it. Yeah. If you play offline, they, I'm pretty sure they disappear. Um, okay. I will start doing that immediately. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Although I mean, there is some benefit. If people place them in dark areas, they give off light and you, like, that's kind of helpful. Yeah. And I guess there's also blood stains of where people have died before, which can be useful information sometimes. The but effects and lighting in this game are fantastic. 
at least on ps5 when you finally get the torch and go into a cave oh boy it is beautiful yeah so do you guys think that a lot of the high praise is because it's so difficult to know what the fuck to do that once you figure it out you feel badass and so everyone has that feeling and like i don't i don't think so because i don't find myself figuring things out i think i just grind and play enough and the, the reason why people love it i haven't read a lot of the reviews to be honest is how great exploration is it, it might be the from what i've played the best open world and most satisfying exploration of any open world game i'm struggling what do, you, to... what do you look it up on the wikis uh like some like i get worried like if there's this pot you know those pots that they were talking about like those talking pots i found one of those and it says to hit them from behind and i'm worried if i hit them too hard they're going to shatter and i'm going to lose that forever so i look up like what am i supposed to do with alexander the the pot <laughs> and like i don't want to the biggest thing is i don't want to screw myself out of something in the game so that's that's why i'm looking up wikis or everyone is i'm looking at how to beat something I'm like use your summoning bell i'm like i don't even have the summoning bell where, where am i supposed to get the summoning bell like yeah, that's I mean, the that's stuff like Frank was saying, the articles that are like the first 10 things to do or whatever, those are very helpful. So and definitely I, read I those. I see no reason why this game couldn't put like an optional, do you want us to help you find the first 10 things in this game in a, in a uh, optimal order? Now, have any yeah. of you guys used like game help? Is there any game help features from the PS5? <laughs> Absolutely not. Well, yeah. I think, Huck, do you want to tell your story about when it comes to the achievement helpers and oh, uh, activities sure yeah so on sony there's a requirement that you need to have if you have a campaign you need to have one of the new ps5 activities uh for the campaign progress and it needs to kind of track how much percentage complete you are and uh, i was notified by one of the guys on my team that on Elden Ring PS5, no matter how long you've played, it sits at zero. So obviously, uh, Sony decided to just give them the pass and not worry about that certification requirement. The bare minimum requirement. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah it, that I, I always forget to look at that stuff. Like there have been a couple of games that I've used those built-in tips uh, on the the PS5 console. Um, but I, yeah, I totally forgot about that. Yeah. Multi-platform games, generally not great at it, but, uh, yeah. Returnal is actually really good for that stuff and tracking collectibles. I, I they do it well. The game okay. help is like really hard, really hard yeah. to do. If you're trying to do it on multiple platforms, like it's really a lot of work yeah. to specify all that stuff for just one platform. It's really difficult. Okay, so I think we'll wrap up the Elden Ring discussion there. I guess, to summarize, believe the hype. It, it is hype-worthy. Definitely, at this point, I can say 100%, no questions asked, a better game than Breath of the Wild, and very similar. Well, it's in interesting you say that, though, because I think my question is, would this game exist? Would it do a lot of the things it does without Breath of the Wild? And this kind of segues into the discussion of what makes a perfect 10 game because i feel it does make me say one more thing and why i agree with you but it was kind of inevitable it might have just been a, a money and time thing an open world from software game essentially they were dark souls was open world right like you could walk anywhere and you know do the whole map but they were more linear and like making this style of game open world is the best thing that could ever happen to it because in a linear one you keep doing the same thing over again and you just get more frustrated in this one when you're doing something and you suck you're like okay go do something else and it like it's not a like frustration point it's a liberating point like hey i'm gonna go do something else or go try some other boss and come back and that's because it's open world and i can go anywhere anytime so uh and it's i already unlocked a huge area out of the gate so uh it, this souls like 
or from software games are kind of the perfect game for open world. <laughs> like it, it doesn't get any better. It's the perfect marriage. It's actually made that genre better. Where usually when games go open world, it's like like forcing it. I'm like, oh, like remember Jack and Daxter and Sly Cooper, like everyone. We have to make it open world. We have I'm like, stop. Stop making your games open world. No one cares. <laughs> You're just doing the same thing over and over again. Like all these open world games, it's the same thing over. And this does not feel like that. Yeah. So just, you know, for the record, personally, still prefer Breath of the Wild. But, um, but you know, to, to talk about the idea of a perfect 10, to me, the thing that kind of needs to be there for a perfect 10 is it needs to be something that maybe hasn't been done before, something that's innovative, that's pushing things forward, that's evolving. And that's what I feel like Breath of the Wild was that. I I question if Elden Ring is that right now. I, I don't know. Maybe I'm not far enough in. Like I, I, That is I just, certainly not a factor for me for Perfect 10. Innovation is not a requirement for me. Uh, I tend to lean more to... I'll use a term that I think... Uh, Graham introduced to me at some point talking about his company's games the idea of reducing friction a lot of games are fun it's the friction of like annoying stuff and getting stuck and cumbersome controls and clanky controls that would really stop me from giving a game perfect Sekiro I absolutely love it but I cannot give it a 10 because the ledge grabbing that is a requirement in the game is awful it is like PS1 level ledge grabbing, it sucks. And this problem has been solved by other games. That's the other thing too. You might not do something well, but if I played a game 10 years ago that solved this problem, I have to hold to hold it against your game. And same with the grapple hooks. Like, I, when I think of what a perfect game is, like a 10, it's weird because we do five out of fives all the time on movies that aren't perfect. You just like have an enjoyment level. So I feel like for personal enjoyment, I would give game, games 10. But with games, there's always something to criticize to the point of it being... The only game I can think of that's a perfect 10, really, is Portal. Like, Portal is perfect. <laughs> like, it's... it's Like, literally, you play the game the same way the whole time. It doesn't tell you anything. Uh, it's perfect level of difficulty for puzzles. It's it, It's a perfect game. Yeah, it is really good. And I, yeah, I mean, I, I think interesting to compare games and movies in that regard. Um, I mean, this was kind of something I was trying to hint at when we were debating Ratchet and Clank and Psychonauts 2 a little bit, which is like with games, and we have talked about this, like with games, there is this, there are technical elements that you can look at almost from a scientific perspective mathematical perspective and just say, hey, these controls didn't quite feel right. This particular mechanic didn't work. Or you <laughs> fell a lot when you shouldn't have fallen. You know, there's very specific things that you can point to and be like, that didn't work. And because of that, a lot of times, those are things that a score drops in a video game review. But I feel like we should be moving towards something more like movies where it is the overall experience Take all that stuff together, and what did you get out of the game? What was the experience? What did you remember about it? And that should be what the rating is based on. I, I mean, obviously, different publications have different formats and stuff, but that's kind of what I feel. You know, I, I get that, that but where it gets a little weird to me, I know this is kind of a strange thing to talk about, but IGN, right? Review scores are associated with that website right? Where, you know, if I'm giving my personal enjoyment level, that's a different thing. Like, I love this game. I'd give it a five out of five. Like, you're represented, like, it feels different when it's coming from, like, okay, this publication says it. If IGN said, hey, Luke Riley gives Forza Horizon 5 a 10, that actually reads different to me. And it's like, this website is saying this game is a 10, yet I bet within... The, the actual website, 20 different people would not give it a 10. So like that, that is, has to, that has to mean something. 
That is like, tricky. For a website, it should be everyone there or almost everyone there thinks it's a 10. Yeah. I mean, some websites have done things where they have like another take and they'll have like a little sidebar with somebody else's opinion and things like that to try and balance it out. But ultimately, yes, you have one person writing a review and giving a score that for some of these big sites, that is now associated with that site. Like that's their statement on this game. And that is kind of a weird thing. And that with websites, it feels like reviews are becoming statements a lot. And I, I do think they... Uh, encourage hot takes on reviews for uh for comments and clicks like i Mm -hmm. I do think that's a thing and so we're going to talk about the ign's list of like games they have given a full a perfect 10 to but huck Uh, what's yeah what what's your like what is a perfect 10 for you what's the criteria there and have you played any games you would consider a perfect 10 yes i would say yes to that last question definitely portal um, I don't know. I'm having trouble just remembering <laughs> games. What, okay, I, I got a few but. that I thought, like, would you give Final Fantasy VII, the original, a 10? Probably not. Okay. Probably not. I, I feel like the remake is close to a 10 for me. Yes. and I would say so. I would almost lock in a 10 if it got rid of the mechanical arm puzzles with crates in that one section. <laughs> Like that's how bad that section is, and yeah. the the upper platforms, it's like so repetitive and like confusing. If they if they improve those areas, I would give it a ten. Yeah, it's it's pretty incredible. Um, but I would say it definitely has for me. It is definitely a more personal thing, and I totally understand the take about a website, like the representation of it on a website should be almost like like you said conclusive across all people that are there or you know some large percentage of the people ha- really have that feeling because it is i agree it is definitely a different feeling when it's like a company or a website representing it as a perfect game uh because that's really what a 10 out of 10 means uh, to most people, at least how I see it when it's coming from a company or a, a website. Whereas like if it's a personal 10 out of 10, like you were saying with Luke Riley, um, you just know he really likes the game. And that's how I like to review games. I really like Final Fantasy. I would probably give it, I would give it a 5 out of 5. Yeah, me too. Is it a perfect game? No. But I, it's definitely a 5 out of 5. Like I would consider playing it right now. A lot of 5 out of 5 games for me are, you know, if I finish it, am I thinking about it afterwards or would I consider going back to it after like six months off, even yeah. though Elden Ring is out? Like, do I want to go back and try it anyways? That's like a five out of five game for Was me. Was platinuming it like fun to do, not a chore. Like I'm like Sekiro. I wish I could platinum it again. I would play that game again. And I, I didn't mean to pick on Luke Riley, by the way, it was just the first review, the first review in that list I clicked on. Uh, but you know, I would give stuff out five out of five too. And like, I don't even think it's fair to say like on a website like IGN that a 10 is a perfect 10. It just seems to me looking at their games, like they seem pretty arbitrary to me. And it feels like they, they kind of decide, well, let's, are you going to give this a 10? We'll put, you think you're going to give it a 10? You write the review. Like well, there's certain that's... games they want, they want to elevate to a 10, like Zelda games undoubtedly like no one ever comes in with a this zelda game is actually a seven which i think there are people out there that think that well and it's not even they're not even using a 10 point score because they give like 9.9s or 9.95 they're not anymore they got rid of that oh did they so they only do whole numbers now Mm -hmm. okay because i was gonna say like if you're given a game like 98 (laughs) out of 100 like you bet like you better be pretty clear of why you're taking off two out of a hundred. Like you gotta have a you gotta have a pretty big like a pretty like big list of your like these are my desires and this is what wasn't fulfilled kind of thing. Well, I f- kind of wish that's what the way it went. I would like to give. I feel like that would help me articulate. Like something like Sekiro to me is a nine point eight out of ten. Like pretty definitively. Uh, it, there's a few rough patch it like rough design elements but they're not major 
It doesn't impede my ability to love the game. And like that, this is the one area, video game stuff, I feel like you spend so much time with them. There's so many systems. You need more discrete reviewing capabilities. Well, I feel it's also like, sorry, Sean, I'll cut you off again. Uh, <laughs> it's almost like an English test, right? Or an English uh, assignment. Like it's so subjective. I mean, I could give it a 9.8. Someone else could give it a 75 or whatever. And they both could be completely valid. And the teacher could mark mine as a 50. And yeah. that person's as a 90. So it's like really strange. Yeah, well, I'm, I'm kind of reminded of like, I remember the old Game Pro scores used to be like, you know, graphics, fun factor, sound, right? fun factor. And it's like, you know, it, it, they got rid of it, obviously, because it is a little weird. Like, is sound really like as important as some of these other things? And like, yes. you know. It's, it, you know, it's in Frank's weird. world, it's not, but apparently it's not in Sean's either. But he hasn't been on Frank's side when he talks, when he says that <laughs> in well, other cases. I guess to be fair, the, the final score, and I think they always said this, was never like the average of all the others. It was a separate, like, this is the final score, but we're just giving you <laughs> ratings of some of these other areas. But um, just one thing I wanted to touch on is I think there is more scrutiny on review scores for games compared to something like movies because you know obviously games cost more money they're eighty dollars video game systems cost you know hundreds of dollars people want to know if i'm going to spend that money what am i going to get am i going to enjoy it is it going to be worth my money and that's where you get into this weird version of like it's not just like somebody giving their take on a game and and writing analysis of a game it's people also do look at it as like almost a consumer reports type thing yeah and it's like i don't like that but i do get it like i understand like people want to put their money in a good place i get it but it's also bullshit for video game publications to do that because they are so like arbitrary with when they enforce that. I know my classic example. I've said it once. I'll say it again. I've probably said it a hundred times before. <laughs> you know what I'm going to say, Sean? No. <laughs> Metal Gear Solid 5 Ground Zeroes got an 8.5, which is a demo. It is a glorified demo that you can beat in an hour and a half. Sure, you can do lots of stuff in it. And then another game like The Order 1886, a seven-hour game, that's ten dollars more. Got a six because it's short and and not a lot to do. There's not a good value there. You can't pick and choose when length and value matters. You can put a, a, a note like, "Hey, this game's short." Just a heads up. You cannot evaluate a game based on how much time it takes and how much value it's worth. That needs to be eliminated from video game journalism. Yeah, I mean, I agree. It's like, it's, I, I think there's, you can tell people how long a game is that can factor into their decision. I don't think that should factor into the score. But yeah, I, I mean, I think it can yeah. definitely have the opposite effect where a game is long for the sake of being long and you keep doing stuff over and over again. And if you want to yeah. get to the point where, you know, AAA games are feasible in terms of budget and time, like, then there should be incentive to say, we're not going to give you bonus marks for making your game longer for the sake of it being longer by putting 20 of the same mission. We're going to penalize you for that. That is not inventive. That is not creative design. Like, it, Ghost of Tsushima was a grind, and uh, it was uninventive. You, I have to hold that against the game. It's not like, well, I didn't like it, but for someone who likes doing this boring stuff, it... It just gives you 20 more hours of doing it. I mean, the counter argument to that is always just play the game again if you love it that much. Yeah, or, you know, if a lot of that stuff is optional side mission stuff, because I didn't do a lot of the side missions, I didn't feel like it was a big grind personally. Same. But that's but that's where the, that you, your personal experience of the game, like, you know, and, and getting back to Elden Ring and some of these reviews, like people have mentioned in the reviews that there's huge sections and bosses that they just didn't see in their playthrough because it's such a big game. Like, what does that mean? Like, how does that factor into a review? Like, it's that's a good crazy. point. Like, what if that's the worst part of the game? <laughs> and you just, <laughs> yeah. like, what if it's completely broken? 
I kind of like that, actually. I kind of like that, that they could go back, play again, and find things they never found the first time. That's kind of the fun of other RPGs where you kind of discover stuff. I mean, I know you're doing your Power Picks walkthrough super don't miss anything guide, but... Um, For the record, I'm not. It doesn't exist yet, and it's giving me, causing me a lot of stress. <laughs> <laughs> But I mean, that's that can be fun if people really like it. Now, I would think that applies better in a game that's 20 hours versus 80 to 100 hours, so that you know your second playthrough is kind of like hour 20 to 40 instead of 90 to whatever 160 or whatever it is. But um, I think to review a game, you should have to do everything in it. And that brings up another point, which Except is when we review games for the. <laughs> 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 that brings up another point about Elden Ring, which is a lot of reviews mention the fact that they got review copies a week before release. It's like a 90 hour game. Like I, I think there's a lot of people that reviewed this game and didn't even didn't finish it. Like I, I think that's a, a thing. Like it, it's it's I don't know how you could. Like it's kind of a lot of people would say Breath of the Wild is the best game ever and never finished it. <laughs> Sure, but I mean, and I don't mean finish like everything. I mean just the basic game. Right, your anecdotal evidence that nobody finishes Breath of the Wild. <laughs> which Tim I don't Rogers, totally apply, but says it's like I think he, I can't remember where he put it on his games of the decade. And in that own video, or in that video, he says I've never finished the game. Like, ha what? Yeah, but I mean, and I think I can see the same thing happening with Elden Ring for sure, not just because of difficulty, but because, you know, you just start playing the game and you just start going off, doing things, getting distracted. Like, you know, that happened to me in Breath of the Wild for a long time until I was like, okay, I'm actually going to finish this. But like, you just start playing and you get, you know, pulled into other things because it's a cool world to explore. Well, the um, reason why Breath of the Wild is not a 10 is... It is great for all those reasons you're saying, Sean, but if the the fun part of that game is exploration, it actually does not facilitate exploration well. It makes, it, like, you move so slow, the world is sparse, it's a bit repetitive, uh, and, you know, with better technology, it could have been a perfect game. I think it's limited by the power of the, the Switch, and I guess the, uh, the Wii U to some extent, and it's... I, I still think it's never going to be as good as other games until it kind of Nintendo gets over themselves a bit. I mean, I just think the the climbing and the hang glider mechanic in that game makes you feel like you can go anywhere at any time, and mm -hmm. that was pretty fun for me. So except you can't, except you really can't. Like most, most there's one part can. in the game I was like climbing it. I'm like, oh, I'll wait till the rain passes. I have to wait for the rain. Oh, because the cliff side's wet. <laughs> this is fun. <laughs> All right, just wait. And then I wait, and I wait, and I wait, and then I... Wh why is this rain never stopping? Oh, let's look up online. Oh, it'll never stop raining there until you go defeat something. How am I supposed to know that? <laughs> why would I think rain yeah, would I never mean, stop? I, Cause it's because everywhere else in the game, it stops at some point. And Zelda, oh, the cooking is so fucking boring. It's such a chore. <laughs> that alone gets it away from being perfect. They don't have a way to fast cook stuff is so brutal. That menu, having to go and pick stuff from a menu all the time, get real. That game is brutal. <laughs> I had no problem with the cooking personally, so... I don't know. Cooking Frank. is great the first time you do it and you get that cool little sound and poof, like awesome. That's a great like showcase mechanic. Functionally, in a 150 hour game, it's the worst. I mean, by the time you get far in the game, you're only really cooking one or two things. And then why is it in the game? I don't know. Good question. Anyway, enough. This is not a, a, a redo of why Breath of the Wild is the most overrated game of all time, possibly tied with Psychonauts 2. But, you know, it's, <laughs> Psychonauts 2 is definitely not on this, this list we're going to go through right now. Uh, people agree there are flaws with that game, which there are. We're going to go through every modern game IGN has given a 10 out of 10. Rapid fire, and we're going to say yes or no if we agree that it's a 10 out of 10. I'm going to say this even for games I've never played. 
<laughs> and if I have played it, I will give you my rating out of 10 with decimal points. <laughs> you guys don't have to do that if you want, but I feel like I need to. I will not be doing that, but I can say yes or no. Okay. Elden Ring. Yes. No, <laughs> no currently a 9.6. Forza Horizon 5. No. Hmm. See, this is an interesting one. I, I know you're really arguing for the, uh, for the no on this, Frank. Well, I'll just give my answer. No, 9.3. I kind of feel like it could be. I mean, I didn't play enough, but I mean, I know your, your argument is that this is the fifth iteration of a game that hasn't changed that much. But I guess the flip side of my it has to be innovative argument is like if you hit that peak, the absolute pinnacle of, of a particular genre where you've done it enough that you just hit that perfect, you've done everything right. Then maybe you've that's almost where done you get too much. Where the map is too confusing and you don't know what to do. You're unlocking stuff too fast. The like dialogue stuff is terrible, and uh, you also have like these hidden billboards that are on top of houses that you have no idea how to get without doing weird ramps that take 20 <laughs> minutes to do. It's not why I play racing games. Uh, it is a nine point. Did I say three? Maybe a nine point two. I'm gonna say no. Correct. Uh, Death Loop. No. 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 Nine point five. Disco Elysium, the final cut. No. I haven't played enough to say. No. Eight point four. Spelunky two. No. I haven't played enough to say. No. Six point five. <laughs> Crusader Kings. That, I mean, I have to admit, this is one. This is one of the ones that I was really surprised is on the list. Spelunky I'm very two. surprised, and most people seem to say Spelunky one is better. I haven't even played Spelunky one, and I agree. The ghosts and all that stuff sucks in this game. It is brutal. Um, Crusader Kings three. Have yes. not played. No yes. eight. Haven't played it either. Microsoft Flight <laughs> Simulator 2020. No. No. No, seven. <laughs> the Last of Us Part Two. Yes. Yes. No, 9.7. <laughs> Overwatch. <laughs> no. Uh, I, I'm going to say no. No, 8.5. Persona 5 Royal. Yes. Haven't played. No. 8.5. Uh, that one I don't feel great about because I feel like I would like it. Uh, Half-Life Alex. Yes. From what I've played of it, I'm going to say yes. If you played it and didn't beat it, that's a no. No. <laughs> 9.5. Red Dead Redemption 2. Sure. Yes. Yes. No. 9.4. Uh, <laughs> it's obvious. Yes. No. No, 9.8. Uh, sorry, 9.7. Celeste. No. No. No, 9.0. Super Mario Odyssey. Yes. No. Yes, definitively yes. <laughs> 10 out of 10. Undertale. No. No. No, 9.1. Uh, Legend of Zelda Breath of the Wild. No. Yes. No, 8.4. Inside. Yes. I really like this game, but no, it's not a 10. I'm surprised this is on the list. No, 9.5. The Witness. Mm. Also a little surprising. Yes. I'm saying no. No, 9.4. <laughs> Metal Gear Solid Five: The Phantom Pain. I was yes. shocked that this was a 10. I haven't played. Yes. Yes. No, 8.8. .8. <laughs> Grand Theft Auto 5. No. Mm, no. No. 8.2. The Last of Us Remastered. No. Yes. Yes is the correct answer. Uh, <laughs> Legend of Zelda Skyward Sword. <laughs> hard, hard, <laughs> no. Not. Hard no. Not. 7.5. How embarrassing that this is on your list. Like, that's a stain, a disgusting stain <laughs> on your 10-point scores. Uh, Uncharted 3, Drake's Deception. Hmm. Yes. Uh, no. I mean, no. is that the 9. only Uncharted 6. one on this list? Yeah, it's 
That's a little possibly weird. the worst Uncharted game. It might be, but still, if you don't include uh, the kind of DLC one, it is the worst Uncharted game for the record. Mm, uh, that one's the worst, but Pac-Man Championship Edition DX. This one's tough. No, I haven't played it enough to really know. I literally played it nonstop until I got every achievement. Yes. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Red Dead Redemption Undead Nightmare. <laughs> no. No. It's an eighth. This is DLC. That's a little surprising, but uh, I'm going to say no. Super Mario Galaxy 2. Yes. Have not played. Have not played? <laughs> Only played the first chunk, one. Never finished the first chunk one. Out so of that never... Breath of the Wild time and play a game that is close to a 10, but not a 10. 9.8 Mario Galaxy <laughs> 1 is a 10. Hmm. Uh, Grand Theft Auto 4. Hmm. No. Mm, no. No. Again, like I understand these are games that I understand why they get 10s, and a lot of it I think is value based. Sean, this is the problem. This is the problem with everything. That is already going into this review. Every one of these games is. I understand why it gets a 10. Why do you understand? What does? Let's break that down. What does it mean? You understand that it's popular. People are going to be mad if you say you don't like it. You understand that uh, there's part a, of it for gonna sure. have a lot of sales and people love the game. That's all it is. This game is not a 10 at all. It's a 9 at best. I mean, w would you put any of the GTA games at a 10? Absolutely not. I would say Bully is better than any of the GTA games. See, I feel like GTA 3, I would give a 10 oh, to. God, that's the worst one. Worst one. Oh. But that was the one that pushed things forward and really did something new and, you know, kind of changed games in a big way. Metal Gear Solid 4, <laughs> Guns of the Patriots. Didn't no. play. No, nine point four. It's a good game. I would love. It's a to movie. Move. It's not a game. It's a movie. Movies <laughs> don't have sweet active camo. They don't have <sighs> like Cut a moment. Every five seconds. One of the first the games that you're actually there to do that translates feeling and anguish into a button mashing sequence effectively. You're crawling, you're tapping Y for so long that you're actually feeling that character in that moment. Like, that's effective. That cannot be denied. That game is a 9.4. Pokemon Red and Pokemon Blue. No. I haven't played. No. Eight. Bumped down to a seven for releasing the same game twice and selling it to people twice. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Legend of Zelda Ocarina of Time. Hmm. It's a no yes. for me. No is the correct answer. The water nine, temple. Nine for the water temple. Six. <laughs> nine point six. And that's all of them. Kind of surprising, to be honest. So Portal? how many yeses did we actually have? I had three, I think. I have no idea. I Mario Odyssey. The cuff. Mario Odyssey, The Last of Us, and maybe only two. I think I had five. I feel pretty no, strongly about that. I would have had Horizon a 10 two weeks ago. Now, I don't think it is. Uh, but Odyssey, undeniably good. That is a... If I was going to give it a 9.95 Spunkadelic style Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles, it would be because of the jump rope moon in New Donk City. It's that bad. It's the worst designed challenge in a Nintendo game in history uh i will say that definitively on record there is nothing worse in a nintendo game ever than the jump rope moon in new donk city okay and the the stealth sections in breath of the wild are a close second let's uh wrap it up this was a barn burner i can't believe where this went an hour and 14 minutes i thought it was gonna be half an hour long <laughs> oh, kudos yeah. to sean for getting me right fired up before <laughs> at the beginning of the show by challenging my auto pop <sighs> auto pop a stack on this guy i'm gonna fucking lose it dude don't you ever question my trophy <laughs> hunting ever again all there right. will be a few more people questioning it, I'm sure. 
question away. Let us know in the comments on youtube.com forward slash game junk. Uh, what you're thinking of Elden Ring. Which one of these games are a 10? Which games do you incorrectly believe are a 10 on this list? <laughs> Unless it's Last of Us or Super Mario Odyssey. And uh, check us out, like I said, on YouTube. Discord is on there. I've actually popped on lately, been mixing it up a little bit. And uh, Twitter, Film Junk for Sean, Mind Group Commute, Equilibrium Sis for Huck. And next week, who knows? Graham. Graham's coming on. Oh, yeah, that's right. We do have something for next week. Graham from Drinkbox will be here. I'll be asking him why the selection wheel doesn't pause uh, and a few other things. But other than that, I love that game, and I'm looking forward to hanging out with him. Uh, until next time, thanks for listening. Bye-bye. During our conversation about the perfect score, the, the ranking, I was trying to think of some way to slip in binary domain <laughs> and how everyone's wrong about that game, but I just couldn't I couldn't do it. I couldn't figure you it out. You give it a 10? Big time. 100%. A, a 1 0 in binary, a 2, buddy. <laughs> Good one. Maybe I'll give it a 1 0 1 0. How about that? <laughs> Two huh? 10s? <laughs> No, you're talking binary eight. I know. <laughs> Plus two. Come on, <laughs> get there. I got there. No, you didn't. I had to explain it to you. You can't give it a thousand and ten. <laughs> <laughs>